Hello, viewers. I'm SB. And I am Amabel. And welcome back to Disco Elysium. You know, the fact that you're kind of in the driver's seat here, um, maybe, you, you, maybe you should be doing the intros. Oh, gosh. I don't know if I could do that well. Is this, is this a level of responsibility? We, just... I mean, we can practice. Hello, viewers. Sith, I don't know if that you works. Have to, you have to say the Four names. wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands, and there is a warm smile on her face. Well, see, I was giving you time to say I'm SB. But you're leading. You got to start it. Okay, but yeah, but the, the intro is hello, viewers. I'm SB and I'm Amabel. Okay. Well, my disco Elysium. So the All right, you're you're, part... listen, you're making a great case for me continuing to do the intro. Would you now focus on the game? It's the warmth of a winter night's fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter. Some cigarettes and food money. Maybe she's your... I don't think she's my grandma. I mean, it does seem okay. unlikely, but... Uh, I'm going to go with, excuse me, man, I want to ask you some questions. Because snapping the fingers, that's rude. It does seem very rude. Yeah. No response. Wherever this woman is... Your words fail to reach her. Well, then I'm sure she won't mind if you just, like, reach into her pocket and... Okay, I will now try snapping the fingers. But hopefully I'm doing it, like, in a non-rude way. I'd rather it be, like, waving my fingers in front of her face rather than snapping. If you want her attention, you may need to be more forceful. Snap my fingers twice. Okay. Where am I? Who are you? Like a magician recalling a subject from hypnosis, you've jolted her back to reality. Um, are you all right, ma'am? You were out. Uh, never mind. I remember now. I'm still stuck in that traffic jam in the 50s. She adds with contempt. Wait, what's so bad about the 50s? The men have the small jaws and everything is made out of plastic. Why do you need plastic when you can make the world out of amber? That, okay, that's... Okay, uh, I'll ask her where else she would be then. Back in Mefka, during the time of the revolution, the side walls and cafes are filled with the young people. I was on my way to see a new Boyadero picture starring Gabriel Buendero. She is frustratingly quiet, and I know if I if I adjust the game up for her, the next person's gonna be too loud. Oh, my one my uh, one big complaint about this game is I just wish that the different voices were mixed at similar levels. Yeah, uh, now I know you told me not to read the comments. And I mostly haven't, but I kind of did a little bit. Right. And some people were frustrated with the audio levels, but there's only so much we can do. And I hope that they will be patient with us because we can't really. Our hands are tied here. Until you came along, who that is. Also, you can just read it. It's words. <laughs> That's true. All right, hold on a second. If people, all right, all right. Oh, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna adjust it live for every different conversation. We'll just, we'll just figure it out. We'll just <laughs> figure it out. I know. I wish I hadn't said anything. Also, I told you not to read the comments for real good reasons. You should listen to me when I say things. I, yes, I. All right, get to it. Come on. Okay, I'm gonna ask who Gabriel is because. Sounds like a movie star. I want to find out about the movies in this place. That sounds fascinating. This is Gabriel Buenguerro. She shows you the photograph in the lavish amber frame. Okay, I'll take a look. A strikingly handsome man looks straight at you. His head crowned with a wide brim hat. His hair is dark as an oil slick. And his jaw, the most perfectly chiseled thing you've ever seen. He was the biggest star of his day. Girls used to faint in the aisles of cinema whenever he came on the screen. 
and a school boys used to memorize all his lines. She leans back, savoring the world she's conjured up. So I take it you were in Mesk when you were young? Someone was. She nods as though her meaning were perfectly clear. Uh, I will ask more about that. Are these not your memories? They are someone's memories, boy. What difference does it make if it's me or not? It makes a, di it makes a difference. I have different questions. Yeah. They are beautiful. That is all that matters. Beautiful and true. And they will win. They are coming for this, you know? All of this. Right. I have some other questions for you. Please questions! Why not, Harife? It's not like I have anything better to do in this hellhole. She settles back against the railing of her motor lorry. Behind her, mountains of memorabilia, photos, and knickknacks line the dashboard. Okay. Um... I'll ask these in order. What are you hauling? Diamonds. Diamonds, really? Of course not. But wouldn't it be marvelous if I was? Okay, but what are you really hauling? Whatever stupid things they put in the lorry, I imagine. So you don't know what you're hauling? How? I cannot pronounce that word. In your own lorry. I quit concerning myself with that a long time ago. Besides, I don't drive the lorry for the cargo, if you know what I mean. She says that as if something narcotic is the real reason. What if the cargo is contraband? Then it's contraband, Loman. What? Do you want to take an old woman in? Be my guest. Lock me away like Bad Hand Hermenegildo. Bad Hand? Hermenegildos' bad hand strangled 300 people. What can I say? Some people just really like strangling people. <laughs> okay, that's, um... <laughs> okay. Uh, I still don't really understand this whole... Bodadero thing. Of course not. To truly understand the Boyadero, you need to listen to on the Western Plain. Okay, what's that? It's an old ballad about a young girl who falls in love with a daring Boyadero. He promises to marry her as soon as he returns from the Western Plain. Yeah, I know how ballads work. I'm guessing that doesn't happen. Of course not. The Boyadero returns from the Western Plain, a changed man. One night, as he and his beloved are out walking along the river Madrid, she pleads with him to give up his riding and settle down. I think I see where this is going. So the Boyadero strangles his beloved and throws her body in the Magritte. Then he rides off, because the Western Plain is calling to him. Okay, that's that's not where I thought that was going. That's what? um, that's a murder ballad. It's a classic. I didn't realize it was a murder ballad. When you get right down to it, aren't all songs murder ballads? I mean, all the ones you want to listen to are. That doesn't mean that all songs are, sweetheart. That's not where I thought that was going. You have to understand. A true boyadero needs a whole horizon to himself. He can't be tied down by man or woman. His beloved was selfish. She didn't know what it meant to love a boy a day. Uh, it doesn't really seem sustainable. It seems like you would need quite a lot of infrastructure and like a coordinator whose job it is to make sure that none of the boyaderos are too close to each other. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I, need a little rice. I got it. <laughs> How many horizons are there? Yeah. It's very good, sweetheart. Before I came, you seemed away. She's just a distracted old woman. We should maybe let her get back to her things. Kim, I am talking to the... This is a rich world full of characters I want to talk to and find out about. 
Don't be pushy. So he doesn't think she's a smuggler. You hear that, low man? I don't think your partner likes you spending too much time with me. Do I want to pick a fight with Kim? I mean, I, I want, I don't, mm, I want Kim to like me. I don't want to disappoint Kim, but I feel like, I, yeah, why, why is that, Lieutenant? Nothing. I just don't think she's connected to anything. Okay, let's change the subject. A pal dream is what it is. She nods her head according to a rhythm known only to her, staring at the photo in her hands. Well, you seem like a woman who knows a thing or two about the drugs. What do I need drugs for, Loman? What I see, what I feel, the great adversary, no drugs can compare. The adversary. Yes. There is a protagonist and an adversary. I am on the side of the adversary. There's no coming back from that hole. Those epithets are familiar somehow. The great adversary. The great unrest. I don't like the sound of any of that. Sounds like a horrible drug. The worst one of them all. That's not really what I was getting at. Then what were you getting at? <laughs> I wanted to ask if you'd be interested in smuggling some drugs. Time to set up a sideline. Why would I want to do that? Ah. Uh... I don't know the thrill of the criminal lifestyle. Loma, what in the name of God are you talking about? Okay, let me put this another way. Are you smuggling drugs to Terminal B? Maybe. Probably not. Makes no difference to me either way. You said earlier you don't know what cargo you have. Could it be drugs? Just this month, I made half of those in trips from Saramiriza to Grat. The U for one A. What do you think they take from Saramiriza to Grat, Loman? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. It's diamonds, Loman, obviously. For real, she has no idea how much we don't know the answer to that question. Yeah. Damn this. Make her answer. If you had to guess, who do you think is smuggling drugs around here? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try a different, I don't, but well, the other two feel, fit. I mean, it's pretty much what Half-Life wants, but I, I, I'm not gonna yell at an old lady. Easy, he's the skinny man who thinks he's a poet, never trust a poet. Also, he's the only one I can see from here. That's correct. There is no visibility of any of the others. <laughs> Thank you, visual calculus. Okay, if you're not involved with the drug trafficking, then why are you still waiting here? Where do you want me to go? This isn't so bad. I can listen to music or the seagulls. Look at all the colors and the features of this world. It's a good palette cleanser, this jamboree. Or... I can just relax and let my mind carry me back where it will, to the Great Plains. I think we're done here, no? Thank you for now. Yes, go. Enough jamboree. I need to get back to Mesky. Her voice trails off. Okay. There was supposed to be... I heard there were th We were told there were three people to talk to here, but we've only encountered two. What is this over here? There's a filthy tank top in there. Oh, hang on. Um. Wait, did I take the tank top? Mm -hmm. I thought I took it. Oh, it's, there we are. Plus one physical instrument, and the shirt is 
Small and conceptual. I'll just keep the shirt. All right, so let's try to find. I have a feeling the third person also is going to say, "By the way, I'm I'm trafficking drugs." So we'll have to figure out which of them. A foreign car, kept in good condition. Oh, there's someone. And hey, spare coins. <laughs> Alright, congratulations. You just increased your cash on hand by an infinite percent. Okay, I can't talk to this guy. Oh, there's a guy over here. He's busy. He's watching the thing. The lorries probably stored fuel here. Now they store booze. Bastards! We have a right to work! The man yells toward the harbor gates. His voice is the loudest of the lot, and oddly screechy for a man of his size. What's going on here? Hold up and stay frosty, everyone. Cops are here. The broad-shouldered alpha male turns to you. He's a full head taller than everybody else here. You here to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down. Why should I? We're here to fight for a cause. Stripes usually have problems with people who have causes. Okay, then I'm thinking no. Good. We're fighting for a cause here. Right to work! Right to work! Besides, we're not that different. It helps if people see us talking, cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. Uh, I don't think I've... Ch mm. I need to question them. So I'm going to say regardless, I have some questions for you. Uh, I, I don't like being seen as... <laughs> this, this is so weird. Cause I, I know I am playing a cop. I know that's the character the game is giving me to play. I'm not comfortable being seen as a strike breaker. <laughs> Maybe you should ask them the questions, like why we're not allowed to make a living here. Shame on you! We have families to feed, you piece of shit. He points his finger at the man sitting on the railing. So do we, Scott. The loitering man hollers in return. Uh, what is a strike? No, I'm not going to ask what is a strike. Um, I do need to speak with the union boss. I was hoping to find the other lorry driver, but, um, I actually need to speak with the union boss. Have fun. Union shits are on full strike. Don't think they're going to let you through the gates. Why you want to meet that fat asshole? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll go with the first one because... If he has something to, to offer about it, that's information that I'll have. I'm interviewing people about a murder that took place here behind the hostile cafeteria there. I know nothing about a murder. His reply is snappy and terse. Absolutely nothing? Wouldn't put it past these harbor bugs. They'd do anything to stay alive. Right to work! It's shameful. Cops doing nothing. You should bring back up, open up the gates for us. Blockading gainful employment for workers is a crime. This really isn't my area of expertise. We are not picking a side in this just yet, sir. Pity. Let us work! I'm just going to leave now. Okay, who else is there to... T just that guy. That guy? Just the... You mean, the you mean Kim? No, Kim and then this... this. It says G-R-I-H. The Greater Revachal Industrial Harbor. Yep, 
You said right as you said, right as you said that guy you moused over Kim. So. Uh, yeah, this guy asks a man with jolly eyes, tilting his head. What did he just call you? A oh no, not this again. You just got away from that fucking kid. All right, Half Life, fucking calm down. I'm not as scared of a cop is like, oh, doesn't doesn't feel great. Listen, it's a grim I situation. Was with you. No one's yeah. ever seen a cop scab. <laughs> Imagine, you cops going on a strike, but then another cop comes in and says, "Let us cop for less money." <laughs> he chuckles, then realizes. Speaking of, what brings the RCM here, to the wild north? Come to see the strife. Uh, oh, okay. Actually, I'll start fastening up the armor. Hey, you're the man in boots at the gates. Kuno said you knew about the armor. <laughs> the little boy had the good on his promise. His promise? To get me into trouble. To sick the pigs on me. Pardon the choice of words. Not mine. What happened? I was asked to look into that armor situation. Official union probe, you know. Track it down, see who took it. Did you? At first I thought, why not? Maybe the pieces can feed the strike. Buy us a few more days under the sun, you know? So I went to this boy. He said he'll make me his prison bitch. He's got eyes everywhere, and the cops in his pocket, and he's the king of Jamrock. Serves me right for doing menial footwork. I dropped that probe right then and there, and it still got me into trouble. One bad move is all it takes. The probe into the armor, what did you learn? I learned that people don't want to talk to a drunk union man about some armor. What is? Not much. Technical stuff, mostly. That was the interesting part. What sort of technical stuff? I did some research into this armadura. Let's say I have friends at the library. I didn't get into the material science, just how it comes off. How does it come off? In parts. Four in total. The helmet was the first to go. The kid says he tore it off and kicked it into the sea. I believe him. The boots were still on the guy last I saw. Too hard to remove. So, as I count, there are two parts missing. The gauntlets and the cuirass. This is where I left off. Too much hassle. More like a job for some militia. Ah... Uh... Oh, I, I have I have choices here. Um, well, I'll ask about the leggings first. Uh, what what about the leggings? Oh, they're just gone. They don't exist anymore. If they ever did at all, forget about them. I did. Hmm. <sighs> um. See, I'm I'm not really ambitious. I have this all this mystery to solve. I'm going to find one piece of it. One is enough. Nice and balanced. Some junior officers can take care of the rest. Yay, I got a compliment from Kim. This is very good. Smart choice. It's only that one spot you need armor to. The one the bullet hits. Good luck if you go for those boots, though. You'd have an easier time resting the spurs off a boyadero than getting them off him. Thank you for your cooperation, sir. No problem. If you see that kid, thank him from Call Me Manana. Thank him for showing me the way. Mm. I need to get past the gates and speak with your boss. Oh, good, good. What matters do you want to discuss with Everard? Oh, you might have information about a killing that took place behind the hostel. Everard's got a lot of knowledge about a lot of things, eh? Doesn't often dole it out, though. But sure, why not? Does this mean you can let me through the gate? I don't operate in that capacity. I'm not a grantor of passage. The passage grants itself. That's simple. I just walk in? Aye. Walk right past Measurehead and go in. Past Measurehead? 
Yeah, the two and a half meter tall Semini Supremas is there. Walk right past him. <laughs> right. Then press the button to unlock the door. Uh huh. Then go past him again. Okay. And you enter the arbor through the office. Está. Hmm. For some reason, it doesn't think it's going to be that easy. Don't worry, I'm sure it's not completely impossible. For example, you could best measure head in a physical confrontation. Or you could convert to a Semini supremacist worldview. Or, hmm, maybe it actually is completely impossible. Has anyone here ever bested him in a physical confrontation? Not yet, no. He's incredibly strong. Nothing a couple of solid hooks from Dexter and Sinister won't fix. I mean, yeah, no. you're, you're like pretty... You're like a pretty rough and tumble dude. Yeah, but... No, I, I'm... I'm d Naming the, the fists. Like... That's kind of cool, I guess. But the, the names are dumb. Can hear you coming around to it in real time. No, those names are perfect. <laughs> Got it. Another sure. thing. Uh, nice talk. I give. I know what the strike's about. You know, I'll ask him anyway to get his his perspective on it. You know, serious business. I'm sure the big boss will be glad to tell you. You'll have to ask him first. He's a chatty guy wants to talk about the strike return once you've met the union boss and are on a better footing with the organization nice talk gotta get moving you're not even gonna try to hit him up for money aces no. high for the rest of the world the aces high is just a cool revishol thing politically neutral in Revachol, it still holds revolutionary connotations. Also, have you looked at Lieutenant Kitsuragi's clothes? He wears a bomber jacket, just like the ones worn by aerostatic brigades. And those cargo pants could store tools for hot fixing your aerostatic. Maybe you should ask him about this. Okay. So that's neat. And I, I, I do like the idea of, of these things working in the background. Mm -hmm. That's that. That's really the interiority of this of this whole thing is. It's neat. I agree. Congratulations on your cogitations. You're still you're still working on that one. Okay. It takes a while. Okay. Okay, this is just the... the yeah, return, okay. return and confront Kuno. Go talk to Kuno. As frequently as possible for as long as possible. That doesn't feel like a good idea. Okay, let me get up here. Out of earshot of the guy. And then ask him about... Um, ask him yes. about... Um, I wanted to talk about you. Me? Yeah, you. I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. We'll work better together if we have more rapport. Hmm, that's a fair point. All right, for the good of the investigation, what do you want to know? Kim, you're wearing a revolutionary air brigade jacket, aren't you? What, this? It's just seasonal clothing. And those look like airman pants. Good for storing tools in. Where is this going? <laughs> okay, let's describe my mind palace to him. You see, Kim, I have this place in my head where I develop new ideas and connections. Interesting. I think it's called a brain. Maybe yours Savage. is called a brain. Mine yeah, is a so cabinet of some kind. Absolutely savage. It's no mere brain. <laughs> uh, 
No, it's more than that. Anyway. Anyway. Um, in this special place, I have come to suspect that you have some kind of thing with the revolutionary air brigades. I do not have a thing with revolutionary air brigades in particular. Just air brigades then? Okay, I wanted to become an aerostatic pilot. Then I turned 10 and realized we no longer have an air force. And you're sure the revolutionary has got nothing to do with this? Absolutely nothing. Thank you. My mind is satisfied. Good. He glances impatiently at his electronic wristwatch. That's all for now. Good. Let's change the subject. A hermetically sealed door locked by electronic means. There's no lock picking or door kicking this one. Okay. A notice. In case of a strike, press button behind guard. Alright. Well, this should be easy. Do you wanna you wanna put on your, your tough guy tank top? Alright. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So. I, I love the tie halfway down the, the the carpet of chest hair. That's a very strong look. He's going to know he's dealing with a professional. Nobody betrays your degeneracy. Oh. Oh, that's that's a really interesting character portrait. The way it's kind of abstract. I mean, they're all a little abstract, but this one's. Yeah, Measurehead. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. Good, good contribution there. Your body does not betray your degeneracy. That's a lie. You're in great shape. Uh, say nothing. Size them up first. I don't know. So I don't know. Actually, know how to how to do a physical confrontation, like in life. I'd be very. I don't know what the best tact is. I feel like not showing any kind of doubt is probably something this guy will respond to. Okay, I mean, yeah, like, like making sense of the physicality of, you know, like sort of developing the strategy is something, too. I would size him up. I will say, yeah, again, admiring my mortal physiology. I will yes. say I would not have attempted, I did not attempt to pursue this strategy uh, with my character because there is zero chance it ever would have worked. Okay. So I can't necessarily give you any real advice. Must be frightening to stand in the shadow of this racial pinnacle. Be calm, I'm Sandwich. You are not in danger because you are not a threat to me. The, the all caps is really interesting too because he's not shouting. You know, and usually all caps I, I see as like a shouting thing, mm -hmm. or or as like um, a psychopomp thing, not as like just this. I I, I choose to believe it's because this guy because because he's some kind of supremacist, he's some kind of of, of racial supremacist. Then he is obviously probably not like. The thing about supremacists is they're, they're dumb. So I'm wondering if he doesn't know how to make letters that aren't capitals. So like in his head, they're always in capitals. I think I think is what this is this is uh, showing us. Also, yeah. be calm, ham sandwich is very nice. Uh, listen, I was just straight up. I'm not afraid of a guy who can't pronounce the word ham. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, I'm gonna puff out my chest and still say nothing. Usually when I puff out my chest, something physical happens, but not, not, not what's going on here. What is this androgynous display of sexual maturity? Aw, oh, that's so sweet of him to notice. Things are not as bad as they look. Sure, you have high blood pressure from metabolizing heroic quantities of ethanol, but you are robustly built. You will survive. Yeah, look at how many hit points you have. I can see you were once an athlete, then deteriorated in your 20s. It is typical of your upload group. Let's blame the failed education system and leniency towards degenerates in your homeland. Jean, look, his body is betraying his degeneracy pretty hard. Maybe you can ask him to leave. She holds her nose. Ah. Uh, I mean, do you? I don't want to shout. See, both these seem kind of defensive and panicked. Yeah, I agree. I'm going with my body is unimportant. I'm with the police. We need to get to the harbor. That is precisely the negligence that has led you to succumb to Al Ghul. His face contorts in disgust, as if he were smelling a dead rat. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Al Ghul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. You know, I'm I'm just gonna push past it enough and you get open the door of the harbor. No, you don't. You need to get another drink. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the Am sandwich race is waning. See, he can pronounce an H properly in the word here. I th I think it's an affectation. Okay. Um. So these two options. I'm the police need to comply now. Take a step closer. That's going to escalate. Uh, the race stuff is unimportant here. I just need you to help me do my job, please. That that. That's how do, it's a it's a might submissive. Yeah. Yeah, I, said, I think I, I think those are your options. I think I think escalation and submission are the are the things here. As much as I hate the fact that police think that of literally every situation in the universe, I think this might actually be one where it's right. Okay, I'm. So I'm I'm kind of torn because like. You know, I, I don't. I, I definitely wish I had more nuanced options, but also like. I mean, you got to think about the person you're playing, right? Like. Yeah. The 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 cop you built. Um, yeah. Like, if you if you lay it on him, I am the police, and I need you to comply now. One of two things is going to happen: you're going to puncture his bullshit, and he's going to back down, or he's going to try to put you on your ass. If the first one happens, hey, that's great. And if the second one happens. I mean, you do have a lot of physical instrument. Okay. May, like maybe I, you, maybe you could do. He is. He does seem to have a full head on you at the very least. You you probably won't die. Endurance thinks you won't die, and I agree. Yeah. All right. I'll go with the first one, and I appreciate you helping. Because here's the thing: I'm not good at role playing, which makes me a very curious choice for being in the driver's seat in this one. But. um... I appreciate you. You are able to do that a lot more than I am. So I, I'm going to go on with your advice here, and I will be relying on you from time to time to help me figure out what this character would do, what feels right for the character. Thank you. I am the police, and I need you to comply. Hyphen hyphen. Now, take a step closer. Jerking motion. Signs of a late stage neurodegenerative disorder. How far the Occidental Ablo Group has fallen. You were once a noble and powerful race. No, we weren't. 
Hold on a I second. Know. This guy is displaying a real lack of historical knowledge. I mean, also, I, I, I just want to knock this guy on his ass. Like, I, it generally, generally, if you give me the opportunity to punch a supremacist, a fascist, or whatnot, I will in a game, you know? My people have been trash fuckers since the invention of trash and fucking. And so we shall be into the future. That's beautiful, sweetheart. Thank you. I'm not afraid of it. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. Okay, well, oh. some of those things are good, I guess. Uh, Electricity is okay. Metallurgy is fine. The rest kind of sucks ass. You dominated lesser cultures, like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato-obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. Okay, what he, is he, wrong? He does have me on that last couple of... Okay, but well, what is wrong with potatoes? Potatoes are good. I don't... Right? Yeah, I, I mean... I wouldn't focus on it too hard. I think you're, you may be fixated on the wrong part of what's happening here. I mean, the guy's just spewing off his, his nonsense, so it's... This guy's less fun to talk to than the other people. I, so far. I would say, honestly, like, I don't know. I don't know, like, what the rules of society are. Um, I would hit him now. I would hit him while he's doing this. Yeah, I don't have that option. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? It is, baby. Yeah, you know it. There is a button right behind him, just out of reach. It must be the one that opens the door to the harbor. All right, what are we doing? Are we are we negotiating with him? Are we just? I mean, I'm. My guess is push him out of the way is literally not going to work. <laughs> but here's like again i'm not usually gonna like i want to find non-violent solutions to a lot of things because i think it's okay to but this 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 is a case where it's so like, they they have made a guy that's okay for me to push yeah this is this is a person who was invented for the purpose of of like being a, a target of violence <laughs> yeah that's what i was afraid of that is right you should leave this stage of history with dignity by inviting the other races to a great world war. You know, like a cotillion. Bring your troops to the Seminine Islands and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. The walls will be lined with bottles of Al Ghul. Your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the oaths to homosexuality you call art, and your microcephalic skulls. Oh, I, I do love a good ode to homosexuality. I do. Uh, I. Uh... This is your chance. He's talking. Rip into him with a punch and catch him off guard. Hell yeah, Half Light. No. Don't rip into anyone. You're sensitive. Remember? Communicate. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not. Technically, I'm, you're better at the one thing than you are at the other, but also. I gotta say, I would like it if that number were higher. At least you put on your tank top. You, you only. Hey. It's better than 50 50. Yeah. Uh oh. How did this happen? Your little fist is in his giant hand and he's squeezing it. It hurts. 
Alright, so uh, 2 plus 1 is a 3. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. You must be out of your mind, degenerate drunk. Say it. I am a degenerate alcoholic. Kim, you should be shooting him right now. That's my opinion. Uh, I will ask him for help. Your fist cracks in his hand like a ripe apple. Pain shoots up into your brain as he's twisting it more and more. The words to the song have changed. Say, I am a violent drunk. No, I won't fucking say anything. I mean, it doesn't. His hand twists in his grip and the pain blinds you. Still, you press the words out of your swollen mouth. Good. Now leave before you humiliate your homoerotic organization any further. So... That was a white check. Yeah. You could try it again later. And I had to... I had to, I feel like we owe him one now, at the very least. I feel like we owe him a couple now, if I'm being perfectly honest. But I doubt the game will let you brutalize him further while he's unconscious. Uh, isn't Everett the union boss, White? Oh, uh, don't be vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma runs much deeper than that. Yeah, but you still serve him. How does that factor into your life? Mr. Claire is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront international capital which is something your race naivistic communists never did. Uh, excuse also, me. To serve is noble. It takes discipline. Your petulant individualism has only contributed to your race failure. It is lax and moronic. The the race naivistic communists absolutely confronted international capital. That's why they're all dead. Yeah. I've only had a functional brain for like eight hours, and I know that. My jam is a mysterious fourth thing. <laughs> a secret other thing. Jam. Individualism. You have gotten these ideas from degenerate youth culture, have you not? You have picked them up from rock and roll songs? Youth culture does not affect my thinking. <laughs> of course it does. You are a degenerate individualist and a rock and roll rebel. A pawn of international finance. Just like the rest of your ham-colored race. Hey, he said it right that time. I am not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the Seminese race. Wonderful. I need to enter the harbor now on police business. What you need is to come to terms with extinction and never getting into this harbor. He looks at the button behind him. The tattoos on his face move to reveal the smallest of smiles. Kim, what do you think about this? You just been standing there where I got my, my ass kicked. I, I was like... I don't think anything about this. We are wasting our time having this conversation. Your pedomorphic friend is right. Mm. You should leave here with your tail between your legs. Contemplating race extinction. I am an immovable obstacle. Kim, he said you're shaped like a child. Do you wanna you wanna do something? I'll ask him about his tattoos. Racists are generally not very good examples of their race. Boy, ain't that the truth. I am not like them. 
I am craniometric perfection. I have taken the trouble to permanently draw a phrenologic grid on my skull and features. This should dispel any doubt. True, that is a noble cranium, but you got a hard noggin yourself. Ooh. Ooh, hold on. I think physical instruments onto something. What if you headbutted him in the face? You sure I'm not chronometrically superior to you? You exhibit forward projection of the jaw, indicative of schizophrenia and sexual inaccountability. From a purely aesthetic standpoint, the dimple in your jaw makes you look like a baby. <laughs> this is not craniometry. Just an observation. No, no, no. You keep, keep him talking and headbutt him in the face while he's talking. What else? It is impossible to see any more of your bone structure. It is covered in the ravages of Alhul. From what remain of your features, I can see fleshy lips. Baldness of the head and long arms relative to lower limbs. This leads me to conclude you are not a police officer. You are a common criminal, an offspring of murderers and sailors from Sur La Clé and Vesper, and possibly even the degenerate sheep herders of Ubi. Interesting. So one of my ancestors was Sir Leclef and the other Vesper. Your racial heritage is uninteresting. It is the same as all Rivasholians. Your parents and their parents made the decision to reproduce while under the influence of al -Hul. That is the only reason you are here. He's right there. It's almost impossible to get it on unless you're both drunk. It's too scary when people are sober. Uh, sad, mm. sad, sad news about the background of our character. Okay, well, I'm going to leave because I'm not, I'm, even with a high, I'm not going to, no. I refuse. Let's, um, let's go get a wrench or something. I have a gun. No, you don't. You gave it back to Kim. God damn it, Kim. <laughs> give me the gun. Very famously, you do not have a gun. We still need to get into the harbor. There's an interview to conduct. There must be another way. His gaze wanders over the whirling's roof to the yard. Listen, I'm saying the way is we beat a man to death on duty. I'd appreciate it if you didn't force us into situations where I may have to shoot random civilians, because that won't get us anywhere. No, oh, now he's mad at me. Kim, this is a particular civilian. I'm not even sure the one bullet in my chamber holes would even prick that hook. Well, you gotta shoot him in the eye. I can't promise that. I might attack him again. The lieutenant groans, but <laughs> doesn't say anything. I love that response. That's right. You should do it again. It's the last thing you'll be expecting. You know, that might be true, actually. The check might be easier a second time. We probably still have to get a point to unlock it, but... Yeah. But yeah, it probably, probably it'll really catch him off guard the second time. If there's one thing I've learned in my life, it's that if you fail at something, you should just do it again immediately. Yeah, I mean, it worked, it worked so well for me when I was playing Roundabout. Just, yeah, just jam it in there. Just jam the, jam the limousine between the whatever. All right, where's your, what's your, what's your XP at? Wait, are we close to a level up? I'm really fairly close. Okay, so, okay, like 30 more experience points. Yeah. Okay. And you get decent XP from, like, interviewing people and stuff. Yeah. You can go talk to Kuno, getting yelled at by, getting yelled, 
racial slurs at you. Sorry, not racial slurs. Different slurs. Uh, seems to be worth some decent XP. Also, hey, that's money. I will get all the money I need to pay off my debt this way. Yeah, we're like only 0.8% of the way there. All right, who's this guy? Welcome to Ayvashol. Announces the rotund man. The remark isn't addressed to you. It's addressed to the lieutenant. Why are you addressing my partner like that? Don't you welcome to Revachol me. My grandfather came here from a 3,000 year old racist isolationist culture, while your ancestors came to this island a mere 300 years ago. Good for you, Kim. Every school of thought and government has failed in the city, but I love it nonetheless. It belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. You tell him. It's men like you who keep Revachol divided, making it that much harder for everyone to climb out of this post-war limbo. <laughs> so we are in a limbo. Yeah, okay. Oh, come on, man. I just said, uh, welcome to Revachol. Uh, it's a lorry driver thing. No, 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 no. You can't, no. You can't let a, a dog whistle stand like that. Let's speed this no. guy up, too. I know exactly what you meant. You think my kind doesn't belong here that i should watch myself and behave but you see i'm an officer of the rcm it's actually my job to make sure you behave i would advise you to remember that silence the air between them becomes tense now shoot him like just once in the leg non-lethally just to oh, drive the point home needs backup. now's your moment to shine Okay, I'll, uh, I got your back. I don't. I don't like punching his shoulder. Yeah, is that? I mean, I guess that's the physical instrument coming through, right? Yeah. You do make a cute couple. You know that. Everyone on on social media seems to think so. The lieutenant exhales and resumes his regular calmness. I like that. I like that Kim like kind of got it, the way this is played out. It seems like Kim kind of got rattled by Measurehead and was not going to let it show there. But then this guy, like the second Kim's guard was down, this guy just like stepped over the line and it all came rushing out. Yeah, I I, I wonder if that is like a, this just happens to a happy accident for us, or if that is something that's you know programmed in into the game. Um, now that that's settled, we have a couple of questions. Whatever you say, officers. He waits impassively, cigarettes smoldering between his fingers. What are you hauling? Oh, not much anymore. I'm here to pick up some cargo, but uh, the dock workers are on strike, so uh, it's a sit and wait on your ass situation. What kind of cargo are you supposed to pick up? Apples. Apples. Yeah, apples. I take it you had other questions? He's given you the runaround. Let's be honest. You were bested. Rhetoric has, our rhetoric has failed us. You're Lori man, right? <laughs> what? That's, I, I'm sure that's a typo. I'm sure it's supposed to be a Lori man. What, what's your stance on drugs? Drugs? They're shit, man. I don't let anything pollute my body. He takes a long drag on his cigarette. Why not? You know where that shit comes from? Sarah Miridza. Safre. Ilmara. They take the money from our local junkies here and then use it to outcompete us in the manufacturing sector. Yeah, I'm sure you it's the same guys. In a fair fight. So they have to get us to weaken ourselves somehow. It's racial sabotage, racial economic sabotage. <laughs> <sighs> I 
I like that first option. Just go ahead and just like wheel measure head down here and let him talk to this guy. Uh So I take it you're not juggling drugs out of Martinez. Not in, not out. I'll never betray the purity of my tribe. I just want to punch him. So many racists at this time. I it's, just want to punch them all. It's a grim scene over here. So you're telling us that you don't know anything about drug smuggling through Terminal B? I wonder if he's getting... Hmm. I don't know shit. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Then what are you still hanging around here for? Most other... Can you pronounce that word for me, sweetheart? Camioners. Have left. What do you think? I can't leave the lorry unguarded. Stuff's been getting looted lately. It's those little kids sneaking around at night. If they touch my stuff, the bosses will be on my ass like ass cancer. If it's not you, then who's running drugs to Terminal B? Isn't it obvious? Fucking ceiling. That beady eyed South Samaran. His little side business is a scam. I wouldn't be surprised if he was peddling drugs as well. Who's that? He's a Samaran guy who likes to pretend he's some kind of businessman. Oh, really? He's just selling his employer stuff. Stuff he stole after he broke the seals on his Humanox lorry. Where do I find him? Just follow the smell. It smells like uh, apricot and oil when you're nearby. The lorryman lets out a raspy croak at his own sense of humor. Yes, yes. Where is he? Looks like uh, I offended your partner there. Too bad. Sea Lang's usually a little bit south of here, near the canal. You can't miss him. Just watch yourselves. His tribe are natural liars. It's in their blood. He's your man, all right. One hundred percent. I wouldn't be so sure about it. Not until we've heard what Sealing himself has to say. Guess need to pay him a visit then. Guess so. We're done for now. Well, that was maybe not the most productive it could have been. Jump Jams, a popular music bag. A glossy magazine, most able-bodied men. This issue hosts a top ten list. Oh no, they're much hunkier than you. You shouldn't feel threatened by handsome men. Don't be silly. Yes? <laughs> you going to ask him about this? <laughs> this feeling that you're having? Apparently not. Uh, but... So, south... Ooh, ooh, wait, wait. Is this, is this a clothing store? No, that's the whirling in rags. All right. That's why it says whirling in rags on the sign. Goods from the lorry haphazardly litter the surroundings. Okay. Pigs go home. The street name is illegible. All right, so... Is that better or worse than the one that says fuck the police? I... Oh. Oh, oh. Stop. Between those trucks down there. Smokes! Go get them. Wait, which trucks? Where? Well, I mean, it said, it said down. Are you, are you holding the, the highlight button? There it is. How are you going to find a thing if you're not looking? All right. Try well, you got some drugs you can do. I'm I'm not gonna do those drugs. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you uh, Why don't you hold on? Just sleep on it. I think that's what we're gonna call it for today. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Like I keep saying, the audio. It's a. It's a. Could you stop clicking on stuff? 
the audio balance is a work in pretty we're always we're always working on it it's a live struggle because again like even in those conversations like we're talking to measurehead and measureheads of audio is at one level and your internal monologue stuff is at a different level and it's just very frustrating sometimes apologies if i get a little touchy about it uh when yeah, you I come know. back next time we're gonna definitely do or not do these drugs and then also other stuff on our way back to measurehead to show him who is the boss properly that it's us for a change and we'll see you then. Bye.